All right, what is SRE? Well, SRE stands for Site Reliability Engineering, and according to this amazing article that I found, Site Reliability Engineering is a software engineering approach to IT operations. SRE teams use software as a tool to manage systems, solve problems, and automate operations tasks. Well, that's all well and good, but what is it like for real? Well, in real life, SRE is best explained by comparing it to DevOps. DevOps and SRE, while they appear to be competing practices, are actually complementary. DevOps, on its own, is not a job title, it's really a practice, it's a methodology. Well, in contrast to that, SRE is actually the implementation of DevOps. You can think of site reliability engineering as a engineering approach to what used to be manual operations tasks. And there are a ton of things that I love about site reliability engineering. So let me go ahead and get into them now. First off, SRE takes the emotion and the opinion out of reliability and site uptime. Now, I think you've all experienced this before. If you've worked in a job where you are responsible for having a website, for example, that is up and running all the time, a lot of stakeholders will be led to believe that the website should be up 100% of the time. And if you've worked in the industry for long enough, you know that that is nearly physically impossible. If you'd like more short videos on TechLingo, like and subscribe. There's more on the way each week. If you want to keep up on the latest in tech and development related news, subscribe to the Weekly Cloud, my weekly email newsletter where I sift through the internet so you don't have to. Link in the description below. Now, a lot of companies will provide what they call an SLA or a service level agreement, which is generally a contractual term, which means the website's going to be up for a certain amount of time or the service is going to be up for a certain percentage of the time. And if that percentage is missed, then the contract dictates that money must be exchanged in order to make up for the downtime. Now that is only one term that SRE deals with and it's not the main one. The way that SRE takes the emotion out of uptime is by defining real values and engineering solutions to measure them and show them to people in a way that makes sense. Now there's a million different articles out there about SRE and I'm not gonna go into a deep dive on all of these terms, but some of the ones that you'll hear quite often are gonna be the term SLI or service level indicator. That is generally what you're measuring. There is SLO or service level objective and that is what you expect from that measurement over a certain amount of time. Then you start to hear about things like error budgets, which are if you're outside of your objective, then your error budget is brought down from 100% all the way down and your goal here is not to get down to zero. And then you also have something called toil budgets, which essentially is a measurement of the amount of time you're wasting doing repetitive tasks. And if you put all those things together, it means that you have a very easily measurable and displayable metric. And it's a very engineering type of approach to this uptime problem. There are many operations teams that feel burnout under the pressure of making sure that their application is up all the time. When everything is measured with SLI, SLO, and budgets, what you find is that you can easily display what is happening in the application and you can set realistic expectations. You can say it's not okay to expect 100% uptime. And if the system falls outside of its normal operating ranges, team doesn't necessarily have to scramble. They can evaluate to see what is happening to the numbers as they progress, if the downtime is affecting customers, and how quickly they have to respond based on predefined agreements on how much downtime is acceptable for the application and how quickly they have to fix the problem. The other thing that I love about SRE is that it is engineering. So when you start to see things like downtime affecting an application, an SRE team will evaluate that from an engineering perspective and decide how to solve the problem so it doesn't happen again. Many traditional operations teams would result to, I don't know, restarting a server every night or something, and that is not really the best solution. With SRE, they're given the right to evaluate the application in total and make engineering decisions on how an application can be adjusted so it fits within the range that is desirable for the company. The other thing that I love about SRE is that it builds a center of excellence for best practices when it comes to automated software delivery and automated monitoring of site reliability metrics. In most cases with a company, a single siloed SRE team is not capable of actually doing their job to their full degree because it requires buy-in from an entire company. But if you start by building a small SRE team and find a good set of management that's willing to support them, you'll find that the SRE team can spread the good word about how operations can be treated like an engineering task instead of a gray area with unrealistic expectations. That's all I have for SRE. Check the links in the description for much more information about this topic. And until next time, happy coding.